What's going on guys, Vulcan here. So when it comes to games that decide to take on the dystopian cyberpunk theme, it's really hard to forget about the complete disaster that was Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, even the comment sections on my previous two videos for The Ascent, people were making the comparison between the two with comments that called this game dead on arrival or just brave for taking on this theme so soon. But I'm hoping this review will help dispel some of that stereotype and give everyone a little bit of comfort to give this game a try because it truly is a brilliant game. I absolutely loved The Ascent and honestly, it's the cyberpunk game we deserve, but not without some flaws. So let's go ahead and get into this, starting with the story. The Ascent is an isometric action RPG set in a cyberpunk world where everything is run by mega corporations. And these massive entities all own their different RPGs ecologies, which are these tall skyscrapers with various tiers. Now, these are all scattered across the planet of Velus, and they each house millions of inhabitants ranging from the uber rich to the dirt poor. And the higher up in the tower you are, the richer or more important that you are. Now, the lowest of the low tiers are home to the indents, which are these inhabitants who are trying to work off their debt to the corporation in exchange for bringing them from their home planet to Velus. Now, they often do this seeking a better life because Velus is this utopia. It's this great place to be. Now, the problem here is that most of the time, these indents spend the rest of their life working off the debt and they never get to experience that utopia that they were promised. And this is important to understand because the main story takes your character and then puts them in a very unique position to earn their freedom early and have their debt paid off. And let me just say, the visuals for this game are absolutely incredible. Like, the game just looks fantastic. The world design is super like Blade Runner-esque, very fifth element, Judge Dredd, and the world feels truly cramped and full of futuristic commodities. So if you're someone who is a major fan of this theme, you're going to be impressed and feel right at home. Now, the gist of the story without any spoilers is that you're sent down to fix this broken sewage system in the Deep Stink, which is the lowest tier of the arcology where all the sewage is processed. And once you return to the surface, you realize that something kind of isn't right. There's people everywhere, security guards are running around, and you soon learn that the Ascent Group, which is the mega corporation that owns your arcology, has defaulted and gone bankrupt, which is sending the entire tower into chaos. You learn of other corporations attempting to take over that arcology, gangs are moving in to secure more territory, and you're caught right in the middle of all of it. Now, the main quest line is going to take you through the different tiers and introduce you to a slew of memorable characters. And this can be completely focused on 100% without taking any detours. You can just go main quest all the way to the very end, and this will have you finish the game in about 12 hours. Now, there are some great side quests that show off some pretty interesting characters, like the guy who's trying to run this like gym and ends up getting everybody addicted to alien steroids, or the alien who harvests the balls off of feral beasts in order to make a youth serum. So it's funny stuff and it really sets a great tone for the game that doesn't take itself too seriously. And overall, the story is good. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. It's just right there in the middle. It takes you through some twists and turns with an ultimate ending that felt like a cliffhanger. So we'll see what they decide to actually do with that. But the real fun here isn't the story. It's the gameplay. So at its core, the Ascent is 100% a shooter. There isn't a melee option or melee weapons. There are some melee type skills, but I would love to see melee weapons or meleeing in the future. But for now, the gameplay is just dripping with twin stick vibes. Your character can equip two weapons, two skills, a tactical ability, and a couple modules. And all of these are either found out in the world or they're purchased from vendors in each hub. Now, these tactical abilities can be things like grenades, turrets, drones, rejuvenation fields, and they're super powerful. The weapons you can equip range from shotguns, pistols, assault rifles, and heavy weapons like miniguns. And all of these come in various flavors, dealing out damage like heat damage, energy rounds, or standard bullets. So in the Ascent, the shooting aspect was really tight. It was well designed, but there was a big difference between playing with controller versus keyboard and mouse. 
Controller felt like it had a hard time lining up headshots, scoring critical hits, and it took a little bit extra time to line things up. While the mouse felt like an absolute cakewalk. Really, you just clicked on enemies, they hit headshots, you watch them fall over. And this leads me to a point on difficulty that I'm gonna cover here in a bit, but just know if you plan on playing with a controller, you're gonna have a little bit of a learning curve getting used to the aiming. And this also leans heavily into the cover system within the game. So from previews, the devs made it seem like you need to use cover all of the time in order to have a fighting chance or just stay alive. But throughout my time with the game, I was able to bulldoze through everything right up until the last bit. And at that point, the difficulty skyrocketed and I was forced into using cover pretty much all of the time or else my health would just be almost instantly deleted. So again, cover is there, but it's not really mandatory until the very end and even then if you have a certain build you can probably just avoid it altogether but that doesn't take away from how well the cover system works this isn't a sticky system like gears of war but rather your character crouching behind different things in the environment like walls trash heaps chairs overturned cars carts and then your character can lift their gun and fire up and over it and this turns into a pretty interesting dynamic because there are situations in the game where you have to raise your weapon in order to deal extra damage damage. Raising your weapon will also stagger enemies who are bigger than you. So if you're dealing with these like ogre-like creatures with these big hammers, you can lift your weapon, shoot, and you'll hit them in the face, which will cause them to stagger. Then there are smaller enemies where if you lift your weapon and shoot, your bullets will go over them and they won't deal any damage at all, so you need to shoot at the hip. So there is a little bit of verticality when it comes to aiming and shooting and understanding what enemies you're fighting and whether or not you need to raise your weapon up or leave your weapon down at your side. Then to complement the offensive aspects of your character, you can also have those two modules I was talking about. These can be equipped to give some passive effects to your character. They're subtle and they're powerful. And they're things like thorns to reflect some melee damage, vital boosters to increase your maximum health, or others that will delay damage or boost energy recovery. And then in terms of defense, your character can have three pieces of gear equipped. This is a headpiece, a chest piece, and legs. And these are honestly super bland, straightforward, and pretty dull. I was honestly really disappointed in the armor system and that's just because the stats were really boring. I mean each armor piece comes with different resistances towards damage and will sometimes give a couple attribute points like increasing your frame stat or maybe improving your critical hit chance but at the end of the day your armor will not give perks to skills, bonuses to attacks, or anything other than base stats and that's about it which really is disappointing to hear. I would have loved to see some different things added to help change change or improve some of the skills or the weapons that you're using. So that would have been really, really cool. And this is a perfect segue into one of the biggest negatives I have for the game, and that's the handcrafted loot. Because you see, in the Ascent, there is no randomized loot. Everything is the same each and every time you see it. There are no chances at getting a Dread Assault Rifle with better stats than the Dread that you already have. And this makes each and every Dread Assault Rifle, after you get the first one, vendor trash. And this literally goes for every piece of loot in the game including your tactical gear, your skills, your modules. All of these items will simply never be different, and that's a problem. And the reason this is such a huge issue is that once I hit level 15, which is halfway to level cap, I had seen all of the weapons in the game. So after that point, any weapon drops were immediately scrapped, and I lost all sense of excitement at seeing a weapon drop. And the same thing goes for armor. I had found a setup that I really liked for my weapons, my armor, and really kind of overall my character. So each thing that dropped just turned into scrap and I ended up using the same weapons for half the game. Now the only thing that changes with your weapons does come from the upgrade system and this will give your weapons a little damage boost as they gain ranks by consuming components and over time your weapons will need rarer and rarer components for new upgrades which is a nice system but still less than ideal for repetitive gameplay because once you upgrade that dread assault rifle if you find another dread it'll be the exact same upgrade so it's not like you have to hang on to your upgraded one, and then all the ones that drop after are like baseline or something. They are all the exact same. So in my opinion, guys, the Ascent would have benefited so much from having randomized loot. It's just a world that really needs it. There's so much immersion and there's chaos that lives there. So if you're a loot fiend like myself, you're going to be disappointed at some point once you've kind of seen everything the game has to offer in terms of items that you can find. So let's talk about skills really quick. So like I mentioned, you can have two skills equipped at one 
one time, and these are different from what you might think when you imagine futuristic skills, right? You can summon robots to help fight for you. You can infect enemies with nanites that'll cause them to explode when they die. You can summon a pocket mech. You can literally throw a mech down and it drops it down from the sky and you can jump into it. It's really cool. And you can also do some classic abilities like a leap slam. You can jump high into the air and then crush enemies when you land. And these were incredibly fun to use. And I loved finding new skills to check out, see how they worked and how they interacted with my build. And these are woven tightly together with character progression within the game, which was great to see. So whenever you level up, you're going to earn three skill points, and these can be used on things like increasing your critical hit chance, your health, uh, having more energy to use skills, and all of these are going to also directly impact how your skills function. So for instance, let's talk about that Leap Slam skill again. You can boost your attributes to increase your frame stat, and this is going to increase the area of effect for that skill and deal more damage. Or let's say you really like using this kind of Iron Man style chest laser beam, and you just love wiping out opponents with that. Then you can drop points into cybernetics and increase its duration. Or if you want to build a full-blown summoner, you can do that too. Drop all your points in cybernetics, have a bunch of spider bots, have a bunch of mini kind of robots running around, your pocket mech. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can really do. And there are just tons of ways to not only improve the skill's damage, but also change how it functions to give it some more effectiveness. And it was a really cool system and one that I really, really love to tinker with to see how each category would affect the skills that I loved using. So kudos to the dev. It was a really cool system. So we covered all of the different ways that we can annihilate stuff. So let's talk about the things that are actually getting annihilated. So the Ascent brings a slew of different enemies to the game and each one of them have different weapons or attacks that they like to use. And all of these are going to deal different types of damage. Now, this is important to note because it not only determines how you can protect yourself against them, but also how you can deal increased damage. So for example, if you're fighting against robots or mechanical enemies, then your physical based weapons won't work as well because they have a high resistance to physical damage. So you need to swap to your energy based weapons to deal moderate damage again. And this is also how their damage works against you. So you need to make sure to put on the right armor for the enemies you're fighting because mechanical enemies also use energy weapons. So you need to swap to high energy resistance gear. It'll make your life a ton easier. If not, you're going to be turned into Swiss cheese super quick. So make sure to do that. And this goes for everything because there's all different types of enemies that you're going to be going up against. I talked about the mechanical enemies and the robots. There's also the human gangs. There's the feral beasts that are down in the lower levels that'll kind of swarm you like zombies and they'll chip away at you. Then you have these different aliens that you're going to have to fight against. So, so you're going to have a bunch of different enemies to fight and things won't get boring as quickly. Now, throughout the game, you're also going to come across mini bosses and something called bounties. Now, these bounties are just wanted targets that are named mobs. And most of the time, they're really, really, really easy to kill. I was actually surprised at how little bit of a fight they put up. You'd show up and you're like, oh man, there's Nameless Joe. Oh, he's he's really intense. And like your uh, little computer comes across and is like, oh, this is a high priority bounty. And they like hype him up. And then you go up there and a few shots or a skill just like wipes him out and he's dead instantly. And, you know, he drops his gear and he drops their bounty item. So it was really surprising to see how truly weak they were. So once you kill a bounty, they drop an item and you take that item back to any bar tender at a hub and they'll give you some credits for the kill. It's a cool system, right? One that breaks up kind of the monotony a little bit, but I would like to see a little bit more depth to this mechanic. I mean, having a range of difficulties for bounties would have been awesome to see because right now, like I said, they all felt like easy mode. So now that we covered a lot of what the game offers and does well, I want to talk about some of the glaring issues that might be deal breakers for some people. So the first one, no end game. So if RNG loot is the biggest problem, the second largest is the fact that this game does not have any sort of end game. Once you finish it, that's it. That's the story. You can go back, you can complete any side quests or open any previously locked chests that you may have missed. But overall, this is a one and done game and it's priced like one. So I'm hoping on the sequel, they're gonna take a little bit more time to develop a full end game because I just want to spend hours and hours in this world. It's such a well-designed game and it's just a shame that we don't have any extra reason to spend more time there. Now, the last kind of big thorn in the side of the ascent is difficulty. This game was extremely easy and it did not give me 
any speed bumps at all to stumble through. Most of the time when I died, it was due to like testing out some new mechanics or not being prepared for a boss fight that I just like ran into. So overall, I would like to see some extra difficulty added through, maybe something like a Diablo torment system or even just a way to crank it up to hard mode. Because like I said, right now, you're not gonna have a ton of difficulty. I mean, it's a great game to play through, but you're not gonna have a hard time doing it. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Guys, The Ascent was a fantastic game. I really enjoyed just about every aspect of it. The world design, the immersion, the visuals, performance was extremely well done. The skill design, all of it was great, but it just sucks that it was only a single playthrough type of experience. I would have loved to be able to fire up the game with some friends because it does feature four player co-op and then put some end game builds together, run through some repetitive content, maybe go out and farm some bounties or a horde mode, maybe try to grind out some randomized loot, but that isn't what the developers wanted to design so hopefully on the next one we can see a little bit more replayability because right now there isn't a lot so if you are interested in the ascent it is available on pc and xbox for 30 dollars which i think is a great price point it is four player co-op drop in drop out if you have xbox game pass it will be available day one as well there is no news on having a playstation release but i want to hear from you guys what do you think of the ascent is this something you're going to be picking up do you want to play it do you have some friends that want to play it let me know in the comment section below but as always thank you guys so much for all the support this has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys on the next one